Today I'm going to teach you a simple process for making pickled fermented veggies at home. So we love fermented foods in our house. We eat them at least once, if not a few times a day, but I know you may not be there yet. We haven't always been there either. Just continue to introduce it to yourself and your family and have that exposure and I think you can get there as well. Sauerkraut is a really great option. I have a video similar to this walking you through how to do that at home where there's plenty of store-bought brands on the market today. But today I'm going to teach you how to pretty much pickle any sort of vegetable to get those fermentation benefits. So first things first, we need to talk about what kind of vegetables we wanna ferment. So the top three we pretty much always have available in our house are pickled red onion, which I don't have any of that prepped for you today, carrot sticks, and then radishes. So once you've decided the vegetables you want to do, uh, we need to clean and prep those. So I don't get too caught up on scrubbing the vegetables to death. Yes, you wanna get off that visible dirt, but some of that beneficial exposure from the, the growing process in the dirt and the soil is going to contribute to an even better uh, fermented product for your gut. So once you clean uh, the vegetables, the radishes, I just simply trim off into little slices and you will put those in your jar. And the jars I'm using are just a wide mouth mason jar. You can get them pretty much anywhere, grocery stores, Target, Amazon, Walmart. Um, just put those in and then the carrot sticks. The thing with the carrot sticks is a couple of things. So I don't even peel these. Uh, you're welcome to peel them as you want, but I just trim off both ends and then you want to um, kind of measure them up against the jar that you're going to be using. So any of the ferments that you're gonna make, you need about an inch or so lip where there is no vegetable. So the brine is going to need to cover the vegetable completely for that fermentation. So I usually just stick a carrot up against the side of the jar, kind of have a gauge of where I need to trim and then trim those up and then just tightly put them into your container. And this time I'm actually going to do some rainbow carrots. Costco every once in a while has those and it's just kind of a fun option. Um, ways we incorporate these into our house. So the carrots, my kids actually just eat them straight out of the jar. They prefer the pickled carrots to regular carrots. Uh, the radishes are great as is as well. Um, I love snacking on it, my kids even do sometimes because what's cool is the ferment uh, pulls out some of that spice that's in a traditional raw radish. These are also really great on salads or fish tacos. Uh, the pickled red onion is a really great addition to like a Mexican dish. That's not always an easy meal to think about getting a ferment in, but get creative here. You guys can mix these into salads, like I mentioned, pasta, tuna salad, canned salmon salad on top of sandwiches, wraps, really the ideas are endless. Um, so once we got our vegetables all prepped and into our jar, we next need to make the brine. So the difference between a fermentation brine and a brine you're going to find in like a traditional pickle and the grocery store is vinegar. So vinegar indicates that fermentation has not been used. To do a fermentation brine, it's actually just water and salt. So you need to do a clean water. I always have these distilled water jugs around the house. So I usually just use some of that, but a straight filtered water from your fridge or your faucet would work as well. And then we need to talk a little bit about salt. So I use uh, Redmond Sea Salt. I really like their brand, but a good quality Himalayan or sea salt is what's recommended. You do not want to use iodized salt because the iodized, or excuse me, the iodine will actually inhibit the growth of that bacteria, which is the whole reason we're fermenting in the first place. So um, a typical ratio for the brine, I do about one cup of water to a tablespoon of salt. You can also uh, play around with this. You can decide kind of how pickly you like it. Some people only do one cup of water to a teaspoon of salt. So it's completely up to you. Um, I do find that warming the water helps a little bit um, to, to dissolve that salt because we do need to dissolve it as much as possible. So once I've warmed the water, I'm going to stir in the salt. Um, before we add the brine though, another option you guys could consider is adding different herbs. So um, I have made kind of a spicy carrot with some crushed red pepper. We've used dill before. You could put in full garlic cloves. Those are all really great options as well. So once that is dissolved, I will pour the water over the vegetables. And again, they need to cover the vegetables completely. And I'm not gonna do all the way to the top quite yet because I do need to go over some optional equipment you guys could possibly use for this. So I've mentioned a few times that the vegetables need to be underneath the brine, but naturally they want to float to the top, right? So you have a few options here. Uh, you can just put a cabbage leaf or a piece of kale over the top to kind of keep them pushed down. I have gotten really into this and I like these fermentation weights. 
They're pretty inexpensive. I think I maybe have them on my website, possibly got them on Amazon, um, but they just help kind of keep those vegetables submerged down. And this almost always splashes on me. So here we go. But you'll see that water came up a little bit, which is why I didn't fill it all the way to the top. Now, after you have done that, we need to cover the jar because we need to get these vegetables in a state of anaerobic, so no oxygen. So you have a few options. Um, if you do not want to get any optional equipment, you can just put a dish towel over the top with a rubber band. That's one option. You can also just use a regular lid, but you'll need to kind of um, not keep it super tight. You need to be able to have it like loosely a jar. I find these airlock lids are really great. So it's actually by the same company who did the weights and they're just a silicone lid that you insert into the wire frame that came with the mason jar. And what this does is there's a tiny little hole in this little top piece and it will naturally release the air for you. If you do not get one of these, you're going to need to go down wherever you store your ferments and naturally release some of that, um, that pressure, otherwise your jar will explode. So that is kind of a key thing to point out. Um, as far as the fermentation process, so it's pretty much done prepping. Now it just needs to sit. So I put these down in my cool basement, but you just kind of need a cool, dark place. And the timing, just like with the ratio of salt, varies and it's going to depend on your kind of taste. We find a sweet spot at about a week, but you may like them at about three to five days or upwards of two weeks. You can kind of test them and taste them along the way, but I do encourage you to get a clean fork or spoon each time so the bacteria from your mouth is not going into the jar itself. Um, what else can I tell you guys? So the, the radishes themselves turn into this really pretty pink color, which is fun. Um, again, they don't keep hold on to that super strong spice, so you may be surprised if you hate radishes. I'd still encourage you to give them a try. I will warn you that um, radishes are really high in sulfur, and so sulfur, excuse me, is great for helping with your detox pathways, among many other things, but because of that high sulfur content, it actually uh, produces kind of a rancid smell, and I'm going to be kind of blunt here with you guys, so bear with me, but it smells a little bit like a fart. So um, that smell will dissipate, but when you first go to get your fermented radishes from wherever you've been storing them and you pull off the lid, just be aware of that smell, um, but they do taste good, I promise. So I can't think if I have anything else to tell you guys today. Please let me know what questions you have um, and how they turn out. I'd love to hear. Tag me um, on social media at Embrace Wellness with Ashley and happy fermenting.